and welcome to Walk Before You Run. Today, today I want to take a look at John 6 and talk about be not afraid. I have teetered back and forth about this pandemic. You know, there are people who are saying um, Christians shouldn't be afraid. And, and if you were a Christian, you know, you wouldn't be afraid of the pandemic. But I'm not uh, living in fear, but I'm listening to instruction. And um, nobody is going to make me feel bad if, if I do have some fear. Because Peter walked with Jesus. And yet, Jesus had to tell him, be not afraid. Uh, and so, as believers... Sometimes fear is going to challenge us, but I know some very strong men of, and women of faith who succumbed to this pandemic. And so it was not about their faith or their walk with God or how strong of a Christian they were. They were mighty women and men of God, but there's a scripture that talks about it raining on the just as well as the unjust. Things are going to happen to us because we are human. And if God told us in the uh, word, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar. And then he also told us to uh, obey those that have ruled over you. And our, if, if your local government has asked you to, um, to wear your mask, to social distance, then that's following instructions. And uh, so I know it kind of seemed like I got on a little soapbox for a minute. Forgive me and let's move forward. But I want to talk about uh, Jesus walking on the water. And we've, we've looked at this before, but I want to look at it from a different point of view or looking at something different inside of this. So if you would join me in um, six and take a look at verse 15. Let's start at 15. It says, when Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. So Jesus had just finished um, feeding 5,000 and more. And the people were so amazed. They, they, they wanted to make him king, but it was not for them to make him king. It was for his father to make him king because he was already king. And so they were going to try to come and, and make him king so that he could uh, exact the punishment on the people that uh, were oppressing them and come in and conquer right now, but all things happen in due time. And that time was not the time for him to reign as king. That was his time to be our, um, our savior. And so um, it says that he went along up into the mountain. And I love uh, what Jesus would do. Anytime there was something that was great for him to form or a task, ahead of him or uh, a great decision to make, he always stole away to pray. And so that is something that we can learn to do. When you feel a little fear, that's a time to, to pray. But not that Jesus was fearing, but I'm just telling you, he gives us a great example that when there is something great ahead of you, that that's the time to steal away to go and pray. And so he went off to go pray. Now, what is not said here is that if you look in, uh, in Matthew and Mark and Luke, I do believe, all three will tell you that he sent the disciples on ahead of him and told them to get in the ship and go across, go over to the other side. It says, and when even was now come, his disciples went down into the sea 
and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark and Jesus was not come to them. So they're in the ship. Jesus tells them to go to the other side and it's dark. And you know, when it's dark, you can't see. And uh, kind of reminds me of when I was a little kid, when it got dark, that was the scariest for me. And so um, I was kind of bad. And so I was scary because um, when the dark came, I couldn't see what was out there, what was going on. And so the disciples are in the dark. And let's take a look at what's happening while it is dark. So they're, they're in the dark and Jesus is not with them. They're in the dark and Jesus is not with them. And so it says um, that they went down to the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. Wind is blowing. It is dark. There is a storm and Jesus is not with them. It is dark. There is a storm. And Jesus is not there. Now they have been with him. And so can you imagine the, um, the comfort in being with Jesus? And so you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to fear anybody. Uh, Peter even got a little bold, you know, with his being with Jesus. And remember, he took his sword and swiped that ear. I can imagine being in the presence of Jesus physically kind of gives you a boldness and a, a, a lack of any kind of fear. So they have been with him uh, feeling uh, confident and, and confident that he's with them. They can do all things because he is right there. Now, Jesus is not with them. It is dark and there is a storm. Verse 19 says, so when they had rowed about five and 20 or 30 furloughs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. So Jesus is not with them. They're on this stormy sea, and then they see something. They see Jesus, and now they are afraid. Why are they afraid? They've been with Jesus. They know what he looks like. They know that he loves them. They know that they don't have to fear him. So why at this moment are they afraid? It is dark. It is stormy on that sea. And Jesus is not in that boat with them. And so even though they can see him, he's not with them in this ship. And so I can imagine that a little panic came and they probably were already beyond panic by the time they saw Jesus, so they can see him. And that probably calmed a little of the fear, but they are still probably thinking, yeah, but he's not in the boat with us. They see him walking on the water, which is miraculous in itself, but he is not in the boat with them. It says in 20, but he said unto them, it is I, be not afraid. So I can imagine if he had to say, it is I, they probably were thinking that they're seeing things now. They are so afraid that they are starting to see stuff. And sometimes when things happen in our life, we're so busy paying attention to what we're looking at that like uh, I read yesterday, we forget what God has said. And so sometimes the, the, the visual, the things that we can see, make us not be able to be calm on the inside and be able to think about those things that God has already spoken to us and spoken in our lives. And sometimes it even makes us forget what has already we've already experienced, the victories we've already experienced. And, and so sometimes it, that fear gives us amnesia, which it must have been doing to the disciples at this time. And so 21 says, then they willingly received him into the ship. I wonder, because it says, then they willingly received him into the ship. If at first they didn't want him to come in because they were thinking maybe it was a ghost or it was a spirit or 
it was something other than Jesus, why would it say, and then they willingly? I can imagine if he said, it is I, be not afraid. Then immediately they wanted him in the ship with them because his voice probably calmed them a little bit. But I'm sure that if he were in the ship with them, that would take away all fear and all doubt. And so it's 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 being uh, in in a relationship with him, being there with him, that helps to dispel the fear, because sometimes we can hear his word. You know, we can hear his word, but we pray until we can feel his presence. And it's something about when you feel the presence of God that it dispels all fear, all doubt. And I can imagine that's the place that the disciples were in at this moment. It says, and immediately the ship was at the land where they went. Wow. So at first, they're not where they're going. But once they get Jesus on board, now they are where they need to be. So now they're not afraid anymore. And they have already accomplished what they were supposed to do. And what I love about this is that they were on this ship and they were trying to get where Jesus told them to go. They could have turned around because they were afraid but they kept going. And that's a lesson to us in itself. Sometimes along this journey, we're going to hit some bumps. We're going to hit some storms and it's going to make us want to just turn around and go back. But we have to keep going. We have to do like the disciples, make up in our mind that we're going to keep going even through the fear. We're going to keep going even through the storm. And once we make that, decision, once we make that commitment and we pray and ask God to come on board with us, to come with, be with me and we feel his presence, we will look up and we will see that we are where we're supposed to be in Christ. Thank you for joining me today. I apologize for being late, but I'm so glad you joined me. Remember to walk through his word before you go out and and get your day started. And even if your day is already started, there is always, it's always a good time to walk through his word for lunch, dinner, breakfast, midnight snack. The word is always good. And so I'll see you next time. And remember that you are blessed and make sure that you don't forget to bless someone else. I'll see you next time.